Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to talk about how the ultimatum game is played in the real world. And this is a very important topic. Many critics of game theory will point to this as an example of how game theory is flawed and it's basically just math for math's sake and it doesn't actually tell us anything about the real world. And basically what I'm going to do today is give you the ammunition to fire back and to explain to them that they're just showing off their own ignorance about what game theory is and that if you properly specify payoffs uh, the way that they should be specified, then you actually get a very interesting testable hypothesis based off of what we would uh, abstractly model and versus what's played out in the real world. And if you fix your payoff structure based off of this testable hypothesis, hypothesis, you actually get very interesting insights in how the human mind works. And to have that make a little bit more concrete sense, let's get to the ultimatum game here. We're doing it for a $1 bill, which can be divided in increments of one cent. So player one offers size X, uh, somewhere between zero and one in increments of one cent. So that means there's not gonna be any offers of like half a cent or something like that. And then player two sees that offer X and either accepts or rejects it. If she rejects, then both players get nothing. If she accepts, then she gets the offer size and player one gets the remainder, $1 minus X. And if you've been following the, the videos that we've done on the ultimatum game and things that spawn from the ultimatum game, if we're looking at just money here, we would expect that the outcome to this game would be player one offering uh, size one cent, so x equals one cent, player two accepting that offer, and player one walking away with 99 cents, and player two walking away with one cent. And the reason, of course, that player two accepts is because one cent is worth more than zero cents. And you'll notice that I threw in this little fact that we're only talking about money here. That's going to be important later. Now, the way the ultimatum game is played out in the real world, if you do laboratory experiments for this sort of thing, what you see is x rarely ever equals one cent, and when it does equal something very low, player two tends to reject it. So what you actually end up seeing, of course, is player one increasing his offer size to something much larger, and that actually will induce player two to accept. And the reason that this is true is because humans value fairness. Surprise, surprise. So some people will be very strict about how much they value fairness, and they will only accept things that are actually fair, uh, which would be a 50-50 split, right? If that's your very rigid definition of fairness, a fair offer, a quote, fair, end quote, offer, would be x equals 50 cents. Now, there's only two types of groups in the real world that uh, actually play it according to this specification here, where x equals one cent. Those are economists, and a tribal group in South America, I believe, that do that. Everyone else has some sort of valuation of fairness, and that includes myself. I'm actually not an economist, right? I'm a political scientist, so maybe that's why I have a different valuation of fairness. Um, my valuation of fairness for this game would be x equals 25 cents. So if player one offered me as player two anything less than 25 cents, I would reject that offer because I think that uh, he's a jerk and he doesn't deserve the 76 cents that he would keep if I accepted that offer. And the reason that I would actually accept 25 cents is because I'm a graduate student and I have to do laundry and that requires quarters. So I'm kind of stuck accepting that quarter just out of necessity. So. What does that all mean? Well, it means that we're not specifying our payoffs correctly. It means that people care more about just money. So these payoffs, you'll see they have dollar signs in front of them. This is people caring exclusively about money. And what we do these laboratory experiments, what we're actually showing here is something cool. It's saying that, well, I have this theory. I think that people value things other than money. So if players only value money, then we would expect this outcome. But lo and behold, when we actually test this, well, that's actually not true. Players care about things much greater than money. They care about, well, this, this thing called fairness. And we can even take this one step further. Fairness has its limitations. So for example, suppose I changed the game and made player one offer something between zero and $100. We'll just make this increments of dollars to make it very simple. Well, what's gonna happen here? Can you imagine somebody turning down an $80, $20 split? So maybe back beforehand, I was uh, refusing anything less than 25 cents because I have some sort of valuation of fairness on that. But now it's gonna cost me a great deal to instill some degree of fairness into player one by rejecting his offer of $20. I really have to be hard pressed to 
to turn down $20. I have to really, really value fairness to turn down $20. And what we see basically is once you pump up this value, pump up the bargaining pie that they're trying to split, which in this case is $100 and in the case before it was $1, the larger that is, the more types of offers player two is willing to accept. So what that means is that player two values both money and fairness and that the fairness quotient thing will diminish as your valuation of the bargaining pie goes up. So the more money, as I said, I put here, the more offers you're likely to accept. And this becomes really easy to see in the extreme, of course, when maybe uh, we move this offer up to, uh, let's see, it could be zero to $1,000. Now, if you take the same 80-20 split, maybe there are some crazy people out there who just really value fairness and they would turn down this sort of offer. Well, are they really gonna turn down an $800, $200 split? And if you go to the super extreme, of course, say a million dollars, an 80%, 20% split there is $800,000 versus $200,000. And I don't think I know anyone, anyone at all, I don't think you could find anyone in the six billion plus people who live in the world that would refuse $200,000 simply to instill a degree of fairness into the other player. So. What I hope you have learned over the course of this video is that this common criticism about the ultimatum game and about game theory in general being a quote sham end quote as a result of this difference between what we see in the ultimatum game played out here in these models and the ultimatum game played out in the real world, well, that's just because we haven't properly specified our payoffs. And we usually do this as teachers of game theory because it's very easy to just uh, have numbers here and make it easier for people to solve. But of course, the real world, as we should expect, is a little bit more complicated than that. But once we program in these extra complications, we actually get the sensible result that we were looking for. So one of the reasons that we actually use game theory is to test out models that are wrong. And that's what we did here when we did the $1 experiment and we, we talked about how most people would reject one cent. So the next time someone brings you this complaint about game theory, I want you to fire back with this ammunition I just gave you and explain to them that what they're saying actually doesn't make sense and it actually supports game theory contrary to what they believe. Hope you found this useful.